First we got our guitars. This first one is a Epiphone Les Paul standard. Uh, I replaced the pickups with a uh, DiMarzio Steve Special and a DiMarzio Air Norton. Alright, so you can see we'll follow the guitar cable. Uh, it goes through there down to a Boss NS2 noise suppressor. Pretty much kind of low threshold. I don't get a whole lot of feedback so I don't have to worry about it. Straight into a Jim Dunlop Crybaby 535Q adjustable uh, frequency range, Q control and volume boost. I don't use the volume boost. Straight into the input of the Mesa Boogie Tri-Axis preamp. Then we've got that, all going through all five stage tubes, and a single output into the Nady 535Q. See if you can see the back of that there. Uh, it goes through the input, through one side of it only, back out the output, then it comes up through here, through this cable, into my Roland Adderall UA1000. This is basically an external audio interface for uh, your PC. We've also got a, uh, a MIDI control here. Uh, I just want to break away from the guitar signal chain to show you this. This MIDI cable is coming back from the output of the Adderall, so basically computer controlled MIDI programming into the input of the triaxis. So you basically send a few program change messages and you can totally change the sound of this guy on the fly. I use that within uh, Cakewalk Sonar, my, my digital audio workstation. Uh, so basically, once it goes into the Adderall, the computer interface, it's, it does a, a digital audio conversion, digital analog conversion, sorry, and basically runs through whatever I want it to run through, or I could have it just send directly out in stereo to these, these this pair of AB outputs on the 7 and 8 channels. You can see that. So it comes in on the 7th channel, goes out on the 7 and 8 channels. I basically run that through a pair of quarter inch lines into my uh, stereo Simul Class 290 Mesa Boogie power amp. This thing's a beast. Gets pretty pretty loud. Uh, and then I had that running in stereo out to the back of my 4x12 cab here. And that's about it. I don't use the, the cab for recording anymore since I made my own homemade impulse with it. So I just use that for monitoring basically when I'm recording. So you, you saw that I have the, the raw preamp signal of the triaxis heading out to the Adderall input. So that's what I record basically. And then I put a, a post effect process on and uh, basically simulate my own cabinet mic'd with a Shure Gun 757, just about exactly in this con uh, configuration. So you can see here's the whole cabinet and you see the SM57. What I don't like about this cabinet grill is that you can't clearly see the speaker cone, so it kind of makes it hard to position the speaker, the, sorry, the microphone, you know, where you'd ideally like it to be, so you just kind of have to guess a lot. That's all right. So that runs in into the built-in preamp, which is also another nice feature of this Adderall UA1000. So this is my short SM57 guy. I have a second one plugged in, but I don't use that anymore. So that runs in on the first channel. Uh, a decent amount of gain, but not too much, so it doesn't clip. Uh, that's a very important gain stage, you know, got to figure that stuff out. And then I just record that raw signal, like I said, through the uh, sonar and post-process that. Uh, here, we'll, we'll show you the, uh, the Adderall proprietary mixer application. So you got a whole lot of crazy settings in here. Uh, so we click on the patch bay. If you can see this, uh, it's got a mapping of basically inputs and outputs. So whatever is hardwired on the input system, you can tell it to virtually map to the internal inputs or internal outputs or whatever, which is also kind of cool. So for, for monitoring, you can see here I've got output 7.8 directly mapped to the input of 7.8. So that means my input goes in stereo out to the 7.8 output pair. And that's how I get my, uh, my monitoring through my amp, and I can record the raw dry signal from the, the tri-axis. we got a sample session of... Uh, my latest video, Creeping Death, up here on the monitor. I just want to show you like a, a before and after sound of, say, the uh, what the, the, the triaxis signal sounds like with and without the, uh, the speaker simulation. So let's see here. 
I'm just going to bypass that and solo the channel. <laughs> So you can hear it's kind of fizzy on the top. Uh, so we'll, we'll turn on our revalver plug-in, which is this guy. And basically if I've, I've just set the default settings on the speaker convolver simulator, loaded up my custom impulse that I've made with uh, my own gear, the 290 and the, and the 4x12 cab, and then I just run that on a single channel in, uh, in mono. <laughs> That sounds more like a mic cabinet, doesn't it? Uh, then I just mix a whole bunch of channels together, a bunch of tracks together, and uh, send them out through this master bus here that's got multi-band compressor, a tube leveler, and boost 11. These, this is a fantastic set of outputs. Um, it really, really makes a difference in the, the overall sound of the mix. Here we can listen to a sample of that. Sorry. Jiggling around too much. So you can tell a vast amount of difference between the two sounds. Uh, I was switching, bypassing that effects bin on and off so you could hear the difference that, that these set of plugins make. A lot of cool stuff you can figure out. I'll probably make a second video on you know all my cakewalk uh, tips and tricks that I like to use for, for mixes. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope this isn't too long and I hope you got something out of it. So at least you get to see some cool stuff. And there's my cat. So, all right, take it easy.